Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Bluetooth dongle and then also setting up the connection profiles on OBD scanner for the Chevy Equinox EV. This will also work for other Altium vehicles as well. Let's get into it. All right, so a bunch of people have been asking me about this, and I tend to not want to do things about the like the the nerdy detail kilowatt amp stuff because a lot of people, um, you know, don't really care about that. But people are asking, so I shall deliver. So first thing is first, we have the V Peak BLE. OBD2 Bluetooth dongle. And this is what I use. There's also a BLE Plus if you want. I think it just has a few more um, like profiles in it, but this one has always worked for me for the most part. Uh, and you can get that on Amazon. It runs anywhere from like 25 to 40 bucks, maybe a little bit higher for the BLE Plus. But this one has really worked for me. And a lot of people um, who use Car Scanner app use the VPeak. So there is that. Once you get that dongle, you'll install it. I'm gonna insert some footage here of how to do that for the Chevy Equinox EV. All right, everyone, I'm gonna show how to plug in the dongle. So you come down here. Usually I actually do this while I'm sitting in the seat, but once you figure it out, you'll be good. And right here is where the OBD plugs in, super easy. Sometimes they're like up like this, but this one's just front facing. So you take the dongle, you line it up, and you put it on, push and you'll notice it's working when the light is blue. I do want to take this moment to mention, it's probably best practice to unplug it after every use, uh, just because it does pull um, from your 12 volt battery and it could let your 12 volt battery die. I've actually left it in the ID4 for like a couple weeks and that didn't happen, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Anyways, with the blue light too, um, just to make sure when I'm in the car that it's actually plugged in, I'll kind of put my hand here and I'll look for the blue shine on my hand. Um, that might work for you, might not, but there it is. That's how you plug in the VPeak OBD dongle or any OBD dongle if you want to get another brand. After you have installed it, what you're going to do is download the Car Scanner app. That is what I use, is what a lot of people use. Um, if you've ever watched any Tesla Bjorn videos, that's what he uses. This should work for both Apple and Android. I use Apple. I know Bjorn uh, has Android, so that should work for you. If you have any issues, I'll leave it in the comments down below, but I'm pretty sure it does. So you go to the App Store for Apple, you download the Car Scanner app. Once you do that, um, you are gonna have to pay for a membership, but to me, it's worth it because um, I like having the data. If you don't like having the data, maybe you can look around at some other apps, uh, but this one has really worked for me. Then, once you've downloaded the app, you're gonna go, go ahead and um, set up your profile. It's actually pretty easy to do. I'm pretty sure the first time you use the app, it walks you through everything. Uh, but I have some footage here to show you how to do it just in case it doesn't. And then you set it up and you're on your way. So now what I'm gonna do is go to some dubbed over footage of how to do everything and how to set up the profile. Uh, before I actually get into that, I do wanna mention, cause I, when I went to set up this video, I was, you know, <clears throat> walking through and practicing some things. And uh, they updated their profile since when I got it. And so a lot of it's already set up for you. I'm gonna show you what I think you might wanna change. There's still some things where it's not pulling information or data from the car yet. Um, which isn't great, you still can't see the power, so like the kilowatts of what's going in and going out of your car yet, but you can see volts and amps, uh, which if you do some quick math, you can figure it out there if you'd like. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the dubbed over uh, footage to show you how to set everything up inside the app. All right, everybody, here we are. We're gonna click on settings. Once you click on settings, you're gonna go to adapter, and you're gonna make sure you have the Bluetooth LE selected and then you can go down to select device, and then you're gonna make sure that you have the VPeak selected. You have to do this after you've already plugged it in. Then we're gonna go back to settings and we're gonna go to connection profile. Now I already have mine selected. I'm actually gonna do this later in the video again, but make sure you click Chevrolet, not Chevy. And then you're gonna scroll down until you see where it says OBD2 EOBD Altium EV vehicles, click OK, and you're good to go. 
Then you're gonna go ahead and click back and you're gonna click connect. This is gonna connect to your car. I sped that up a little bit because it took a while this time. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's not. And then you're gonna click on dashboard. Now this is the dashboard that I've had set up and been using. I'm actually gonna show you again what it will look like when you all set it up initially. But here I have battery, uh, energy storage, state of charge, um, the capacity, battery temperatures, all sorts of stuff there is what I have set up. So here I disconnected it. I'm going to a different car. You can set up different cars if you want. I did for this video. Then same thing I already showed, Bluetooth LE, click the brand of the car, Chevrolet, go down, select the Autium EV vehicles. All right, then I'm gonna connect again. Now this is what it's gonna look like when you all connect. It's gonna look very Bjorn style. Um, and this did not exist when I first got the app for Autium. Um, they didn't have a setup, now they have a setup and they have a lot of good stuff in there. State of charge, pack current, um, battery capacity, battery temperatures. But I'm gonna adjust a few things here. The first thing is you can see is this battery pack voltage is zero. It's not reading it for some reason. But what I did was I found that there is actually another voltage sensor um, that is the pack voltage as well. I have tested it where I've charged and I've done the multiplication and it adds up. Um, so what you wanna do is you can type in voltage or you can scroll until you find it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for the one that says right down here, coolant heater voltage sensor. I know that's kind of weird, but you want the coolant heater voltage sensor. So you can see I click on that and now it's showing the pack voltage. Again, I have confirmed this to be the voltage of the car. Um, so there you go. And now I have the current and voltage. If I wanted to figure out the power, I can multiply each because power actually doesn't read yet for some reason on this profile. It's constantly being updated, so it might be updated eventually. Here uh, you can see I'm adding another sensor and I believe for this one, I'm choosing to add the battery average temperature. So there it is. And notice how it says battery one. That's because for Altium, for some like the Silverado, um, and the Sierra uh, Denali, it has, has two batteries stacked on top of each other, but just makes you select battery one, not battery two. And then here I'm also adding in the ambient air temperature. I like to have that to see what the battery temperature is in relation to the ambient temperature. So there you can see it's freezing for ambient, and then the battery is a little bit warmer at two degrees Celsius. One more, um, center I like to add and that's the uh, energy storage remaining. It's just nice to see how many kilowatt hours and what I'll do sometimes is I'll take the uh, consumption of the car and I'll multiply it by that to see the, the um, range based on my current consumption. So I find that to be really useful as well. This next part here I add one more sensor that I do like to have personally and that's the inlet uh, temperature sensor and that is just basically where you plug the car in. Um, if that overheats you can have some derated sessions and I've noticed some issues um, with the Equinox especially in extreme heat with when the inlet overheats. Uh, but yeah so there's that and pretty much that is it when it comes to what I like to have set up on the car. You can adjust this however you want. You can change units. You can change the colors. Uh, it's, you know, you can add different screens. I actually have another screen where I have all the, ba the battery um, modules and their temperatures. So it's uh, really customizable and you can make it work for you. But the basics that I've showed you here are probably the majority of what you'd wanna know about the battery. Uh, mostly that being the battery temperature and the voltage and amperage. Last thing I wanted to show here is if you wanna rename something so uh, or anything, you just double click on the box and then here to rename it, you go down to where it says, you, right below use custom title. And I'm gonna rename this to just pack voltage, um, even though it technically is the coolant heater voltage, but for all of us who wanna know what the voltage is, we're gonna call it the pack voltage. And there it is, super easy uh, to customize. All right, everybody, that's a video. I hope it was helpful. If you feel as though I missed something, you can go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. If you wanna change units and stuff like that, you just go into settings and you can change units. Um, I like to use Celsius because a lot of the information um, that I kind of benchmark from other people just so I know, you know where the Equinox is in comparison, a lot of those um, <clears throat> people do it in Celsius, so that's why I stick to Celsius. But if you wanna switch it to Fahrenheit, you are certainly more than welcome to do so. Um, 
Again, if you um, found this video helpful and you plan to go get a VPeak adapter, you can use the link down below. Um, it does help out my channel a little bit, so I'd appreciate it if you did that. Uh, but as always, if you haven't already, please remember to give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will catch you all next time.